Hey, it's Laura Jean. A couple people were asking for updates, and um, yeah, I, I haven't written, or I mean, done a video in a long time. So yeah, I'm over, overdue on that. So how am I doing? Thank you for asking. That's really nice of you guys. Um, I have had the pleasure of meeting two other, well, at least one other person who lives in my area with ALS, um, and and that was a moving experience. Um, a neat family met the husband and wife and one of their children. Um, they're in, I believe maybe their sixties, and um, nice people. There's another lady who lives nearby who's in her 80s that was diagnosed. I have not met yet, but um, it's neat to start to get to know the community of people in the area who are dealing with ALS. It's really encouraging to talk to them. Uh, of course, you don't wish the disease on anybody, but um, this camaraderie and um, just a whole different level of understanding that you get through talking with people who are going through the same thing. Um, so that was really neat. My own symptoms, um, I'm having a harder time walking now, and um, I have um, a power wheelchair coming on Wednesday to get me by until I have my own. It's a loner, and um, we use that as much as I need to. Right now I can get around the house mostly with a walker, but not really to get out, really able to get outside the house anymore on my own. Um, of course, moving with a walker and not being able to get up and down very easily limits other things I'm able to do by myself, so I, I do need a little more help around the house. Um, family's doing well. Um, thought maybe I would mention something in this video about alternative treatments and such. Um, there's a lot of alternative ideas of what might help with ALS out there and I have tried and I am trying quite a number of them. I don't really feel like it's too necessary to go into them unless I feel like something's helping <laughs> with the number one um, symptom which would be muscle weakness and to date I have not found anything that really helps with the muscle weakness um, in, a, in a noticeable long-term fashion. <laughs> Obviously, I would say something if I did. Um, I have had other strange symptoms, like um, strange sensations in my brain, and I don't know how to describe those other than it, it feels like something's moving, um, like a melting or sometimes pinpricks, um, and I would get those in my muscles before a muscle area started to degrade and before it would start twitching noticeably. I would get what felt like pinpricks throughout the whole region, whether it was my arm or my calf or my quad. Um, and I haven't heard anyone else describe that as part of their symptoms. Um, so I have had, I've noticed things that make that worse and things that make that better. Um, for me, I tried a round of um, uh, de dewormer medicines, natural ones. And I don't seem to be getting the strange brain sensations anymore. Again, it's not helping with the muscle strength, so. Uh, is it really relevant? Not really. Um, muscle twitching, that's a much more common complaint from people with ALS. Um, for me, I find that I twitch more after I eat sugar, and it's sugar of it seems any kind, whether it's honey or fruit sugars, um, just pure fruit juice, juice, yeah, fruit juice, or um, or white sugar. So whenever I have any of those, my twitching is really noticeable, enough to have difficulty going to sleep. Um, but I find that if I don't eat sugar, um, and I also find that if I have balanced magnesium and calcium intake and I just take like that calm powdered drink, um, then I find I don't have trouble with that. So 
if that's helpful for anybody else, great. Um, again, I'm trying, I have tried and I am trying a lot of other things, herbal treatments that are supposed to target Lyme disease. I've tried hyperbaric chamber, I've tried um, hemp oil, um, I've tried um, essential oils, and, and some of those things were helpful, but not in the key area, which is muscle strength. So um, do I still do a lot of those? Um, I do. Um, I might coconut oil massages, um, whatever else. <laughs> you know, there's a lot of alternative things out there, um, but I don't really find it helpful to share much on that unless until I've tried them for longer and can say, yeah, I've tried this for half a year and really no help, or yeah, I tried it for half a year and I feel like it's helping a little. Um, so that's the update on that and then the last th thing I thought I'd say is having to do with my beliefs again so if this is the part that you don't really care about this is where you'd want to stop the video and if you enjoy hearing my thoughts on God then please by all means keep listening um, I have <laughs> my video um, on top of a metal chest right now and the door keeps opening and hitting me. <laughs> so that's what that noise was. Um, so get your humor out of little things in life and one of those things for me in the last few months has been the comments on these videos. Um, thank you for people who feel outraged at some of the silly comments and have said encouraging things. Um, most of the time, you find that you can just, um, I find that some of the comments are just absurd, or not applicable, or really funny. The ones that are not kind. Of course, there's a lot of encouraging comments out there. Um, but I don't always need to comment on the comments, but I like to use them as springboards for what I want to say sometimes. So. Um, I will. And there was one guy, or a girl, I don't know, um, <laughs> who said something along the lines of, you're not going to live very long, you're going to die soon. And so that's been kind of a running joke in our family. Um, <laughs> yeah, it's, it's just kind of over the top there. And um, yeah. Yeah, we, we all do die, and um, most of us don't know when we're going to die, and even I don't know when I'm going to die. I will die when the Lord says I'm going to die, and if that's in three to five years, then so be it, and if it's not, then so be it. Um, but an interesting thought on that is, um, you know, I've, I've mentioned before, you know, you don't want to be you don't want to give up because then you'd be dead already. Um, so I'm, I'm going to say something that seemingly contradicts that in a way it does. But um, parts of the Bible, when you read them, um, seem to suggest that, that in a way, we are um, not fully alive. We are, in a way, dead. Um, uh, I was reading the beginning of the book of John recently, and there was an alternate reading of one of the first couple verses that really caught my attention. Um, and I really liked the beginning of John. I think John had a great um, poetic uh, way about him. And um, the Spirit used that communicate what he wanted to communicate. Um, but the verse that struck me was that all things were made through him, meaning the word, which it seems to make sense that that's referring to Jesus. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. 
And there's an alternate alternate reading that says um, that you could you could read it. Um, and without him was not anything made. And that which has been made was life in him. And to me that it it conjures up an image of of a lamp for me, um, like a stained glass lamp. Um, so I kind of see us as stained glass lamps with a place inside for the light. Um, and, and that alternate reading could be construed to say that Jesus, in him, is the light, the light, and that light is the life of men. And when that light of Jesus comes into that, you know, little stained glass lamp, it, it makes it beautiful in a whole new way. Are we beautiful on, on our own? You know, we're a creation of God, and we are amazingly made, and yes, we're beautiful. But until that new light, that new life, comes and in, is inside us and shines out through us, no one will see the intense beauty that we have inside ourselves. Um, because it's more than just us. We are made to have that light coming out through us. Um, and I've been struggling a little with that recently because I, you know, if Jesus is the one coming into us, making us alive, and um, and He is the one that is is the power in us, and the one that makes us possible to 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 really, truly live in a way that's deeper than just what we see on the outside, an, an inner man life. Um, why does the Bible encourage us to do good things, to, um, to strive toward perseverance? Why does it encourage us to put on good things? Um, if if Jesus is the one who, who makes that possible and is the one that brings that into our life, I can only think that there must be some combination that it's not just Jesus, and it's definitely not just us, but some combination of the two. And I don't quite understand that. Anyone who would like to give their opinions, please feel free to comment. And, um, and so the verses that have been making me think, I struggle with, you know, the extent to which um, we are responsible for contributing to the beauty in our lives um, is, is in Colossians. And I've been trying to memorize verses, and I do that by putting in this song. And so if you'd like to um, memorize some, you can feel free to use my song if you want, or you can just listen, because that's probably what I would do. Um, so, let's see if I can do it. It's, uh, Colossians 3, 12, 17 Put on them as God's chosen ones, holy and beloved, compassion, kindness, humility, meekness, and patience, bearing with one another. If one has a complaint against another, Forgiving each other as the Lord has forgiven you, so you also must forgive. And above all these put on love, which binds together everything in perfect harmony. Above all these put on love, and let the peace of Christ rule in 
your hearts to which indeed you were called in one body and be thankful let the words of christ dwell in you richly teaching and admonishing one another in all wisdom singing songs and hymns and spiritual songs with thankfulness in your hearts to God with thankfulness in your heart to God and whatever you do in word or deed do everything in the name of the Lord Jesus with thanks giving thanks to God the Father through Colossians 3 12 through 17 that's all folks <laughs>